even though I've lived a life that I think looks a lot like everybody else's, you know, I, I grew up, I think, stacking up what in my eyes was a loss and a negative and stacking up in, in my eyes what, what was a positive, what was a win, what was a sign of hope. And I remember sitting there as a 15-year-old and I'm comparing my life to everybody else's life that was around me. Everybody else with their two arms and their ten fingers. And I remember even though I, I had gone through church, I had two kind and loving parents that took me to church, that, that shared with me the, the, the hope of the gospel and the love of Christ in my life. Just as I looked around, as I compared my life to everyone else's, I thought, well, why doesn't God love me like he loves you? Why do I have to sit down at, at my high school cafeteria and I'm the only person that has to eat a piece of pizza with his toes? Why am I the only person that, that when I go into a grocery store that everybody is like stopping and staring and pointing? Why is it that, that even for me now as a 37-year-old man, I, I, I take my wife out on a date and, and as I sit there and I, as I cut up my steak from behind me, I, I can hear that very distinct iPhone camera click. You know, if somebody's snapping a picture of, of me out on a date with my wife, just trying to live my life, but somebody else wants to, wants to text it to their homies, to their friends, and be like, yo, check this guy out. I sat there as a teenager and go, God, why is my life like this? God, why do I have to walk in a fishbowl? God, why is everything so hard? God, why can't I just be like everybody else? I was viewing God's love and God's kindness and God's grace towards me on my terms. But man, as a, as a 15 year old, God used a just, in, in only a way that God can bring someone to Christ, God used a dodgeball lock in. Um, of all things to, to bring me to Christ. Now listen, armless people are good at a lot of things. Dodgeball is not one of them. You know, like we can't throw, we can't catch, we're a pinata. Uh, you know, like that, that's kind of how dodgeball goes for us. And so it was a night of misery, but then towards the end of the night, I'm just sitting out, I'm, I'm off in the bleachers and, and the student pastor of this church, he comes up to me and he starts to talk to me. And it's just small talk. Hey, man, tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me about where you go to school, what you do. And in the midst of this conversation, I think he could sense just the heaviness on my own heart. And he asked me, you don't like your life, do you? I'm like, no, nah, dude. No, nah, there's nothing good about this. There, there's, there's no way that God loves me. There's no way that God can use me. Like, bro, what's, what's even the point how does God love a life like me when the rest of the world looks at me and they just see me as broken, as hopeless, as just a picture of everything that no one else wants to be? And this man sits with me for more than an hour and he lays out God's love for me that's laid out in scripture from Psalm 139 that God fearfully and wonderfully made me even when I was still in my mother's womb that God did not make a mistake when he crafted me in my mother's womb, that God formed and fashioned me to show his works in the world. But God also shows his love for me that as I sat in that gym that night, I questioned everything about God. What God did is he sent his best, he sent his one and only son to take on flesh, to live a perfect life that I cannot possibly live, to die a death that I most certainly should die as someone who is a sinner and who is a rebel and who is disobedient to the commands of God. And God raises Christ to life to show his power over both sin and death and to all who trust in him and rest in him. He adopts them into the family of God and then he sends them out on the mission of God. This man spends more than an hour laying out for me God's pursuit of me through his word and through his gospel. And y'all, that night changed my life. 